but not using one motor signal, using, um, sorry, two different motor signals. So we actually, instead of using our, it's not arcade drive, and it's not tank drive. Right? Instead we used, and let me just stop this to show you. Instead we used, again I'm going to go to the robotics library, robot drive, advanced motor control, set speed. Okay? So you see you've got some advanced functions that allow you to directly set the speed of a motor. And you have some simpler functions which allow you and does all the math necessary to do the arcade drive. How many people used arcade drive in their robots previously? Previous years? Um, did you use the, the provided library function or did you do your own math and your own trig to figure it all out? Okay. So let's say for example you don't like the way this arcade drive works. You want to do your own math, you want to do your own trig, do your own calculations. You can do that. You can create your own sub VI, which which calculates and does does it however you like. But this is where I'm going to give you a very important warning. I would not modify the tank drive VI. I'm going to open up the tank drive VI. And just let's just take a quick look at it. So this is the tank drive VI. Let's not try and understand it. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome to, and I invite you to. And it's not that complicated. But what I do want to say is don't change it. Because what will happen is if the, and I wouldn't be surprised if this happens a couple times, that there will be updated libraries provided by National Instruments and provided by FIRST. This VI is in one of the library sections. So if you update your library, this VI is going to be overwritten. So if you're going to make your own tank drive, your own arcade drive, make a copy of this and make sure it sits in your project. Like I said, you should only modify, the, I'm just going to get to the project screen, only modify the things that are sitting here. Let me take it a step further. Let me open the tank drive. I'm going to do File, Save As. Okay, there's a lot of options here. What I really want to do is open an additional copy and add it to my project. And I'm going to call it Ben's Funky Tank Drive. And this is where I could do my custom math and make whatever changes necessary. And now this is no longer sitting in the library section. And it's and so when you get an update, or when you try and take your project from computer to computer to computer, you can be sure that your custom code is going to move with the rest of your project. Okay, so that's a really important point. Don't change anything unless you really understand what you're doing, unless it's sitting in the root of the project. Okay. Yes, sir. I have the same question. If you can go back to the lock diagram. For the robot main? Yeah, sure. So everything I can delete are the terminals, but I, I shouldn't delete the while loops. You should not delete the while loop. And inside the while loop here is what's called a case structure. And you see that it's running different code in different situations. So I'm just going to hide my context help. You see there's a tell off execute, and then there's other cases. You, you shouldn't change that outside part. The code inside here is free to change. Okay. Um, I just want to do maybe another quick modifications to drive a, drive a, drive a servo. Are there any other questions first? Yes. You were saying that the the X it was it was on the sideways as opposed to this. Yes. How do I change? That? That's a axis great question. Two. Does anyone know how? Change it to axis two. All students mm -hmm. know apparently. Yeah. Exactly. I chose axis one. Well, it turns out that axis one is this way. Axis two is that way. So I've changed both of those to axis two. Now you have to load it up again. Now I have to load it up again. It's axis five. It is access five. No, no. what is? What? I don't know. Um, one of them is is this thing. That's three. If you get, uh, I don't know what the other. If you get a Logitech pad that has two uh, analogs, analog one is one and two, analog two is uh, three and four, and then there's a touch pad that's five and six. There you go. So you, you may have noticed that there are six axes there, and so you have access to all those buttons if you want to use one controller and. You have a really talented driver who can do it all. With, I don't know. I don't have that manual dexterity anymore. There's, I don't know. If there's different that. USB input devices that map to those different axes. Okay. So now, if you see, I'm pushing forward. If I go side to side, it makes no difference. Okay. Great question. Thank. You.
So this is pretty typical. That yes, sir. How do you add comments? Comments. Excellent question. If you want to add a comment so that you've got five programmers and everyone's handing it off to the next guy, everyone's working on their own stuff, you want to make sure you tell Bob and Jody to make the right changes in the right place. Um, you can just, if you have the auto tool selected, if you double click anywhere, just sit down for this. If you double click anywhere, it brings up the labeling tool. And you can type whatever you want. If it's really important, you can click on it and maybe change the font size. <laughs> um, you've got to be a little bit careful. Some of these things are set to auto grow. So you're, you're, you can have really big code simply because you, you can't control yourself with the font size. Um, that's not really advised. But this is, this is one way uh, to do that. Um, if you don't use the auto tool, again, I'm just going to show the tools palette. There's a, a text labeling tool here. If you just click on him, and then you can type anywhere you want. Great question. Thank you. Any others? So I'm going to make one more modification now, and maybe I'll let you go. I know how to do it because um, I did it just before lunch, and it luckily worked. Um, but um, I'm going to let you guys try and guide me. So this is something probably none of you have done before. We're going to drive this servo motor, uh, which nobody can see, but I'll hold it up anyway. So where do you think I need to start? I need to start on the left-hand side. Good. What do I need to do? Turn it on somehow. Turn it on. Yeah. Just like with the joystick, the first thing we do was open it or initialize it. So what do you think I need to look? Where you plug it in. Well, let's start. Where should I click now? So I've brought up my, my functions palette. WPI library. WPI library. Good. IO ports. IO. I can try it. Let's go. Let's go digging. Do you see a servo drive? No. Okay. Let's try again. Someone said actuators. Okay. So there it is. We see the servo sub palette. So what I'm trying to demonstrate here is how I expect you guys to go, I don't know, spelunking? Is that a good word? Looking for the functions you need. We'll go into the servo section. So what do you think I need from here? An open, a close, and a... So we'll start with open. Uh, close is a good idea. Where should the close go? At the end. At the end, so like here? No? Okay. Good. Just making sure. All right, and let's do two things. Let's read the angle, and let's also set the angle. So what do you think I need in order to do that? Get, get angle. Get angle. So where should it go? Outside. Out here? Inside the case. Inside the case. Inside the while loop, because we want it to run over and over again. Get angle, and what was the other thing I said? Set angle. Set angle. Okay. So what do you think I do next? One the up. Input. Exactly. We need to connect an input. So I don't know. None of us have used this servo thing before. We just kind of want to get it working. So let's try and figure it out. So where should I start? The top pink thing. You go to the control panel. Go to the control panel. But if I really don't know where to click, I should access the context help. Thank you. The context help. Okay. We see we've got two inputs here on the top left and in the middle there. So for both of them, I'm going to create a constant. Just like we have constants in front of these two for USB 1 and USB 2. So the way to do that is you hover over the terminal, you right click, you say create constant. And that will, this is a good way to do it because you'll notice these are all kind of funny data types. They're not really numbers, they're not really strings. They're called enumerated data types. And they've been specifically created so that each type of function has the right type of inputs. Like the, US, the joystick had USB 1 to 4. There's no USB 5, there's no COM port, you know, there's no IP address. It's specifically created for USB ports. So the same thing for the servo input. So we've got two choices for the I.O. module, slot 4 or slot 6. Uh, I happen to know that this, this guy's set up with slot 4, so I'm going to choose that. And again, the second one, we're going to right click on the terminal, create constant. And now I get to choose which PWM output I'm going to use. Um, is it three? Three. Three? Okay. So we're going to use PWM3 because we know that's where it's been hooked up. Well, you guys knew. Uh, I didn't. Okay. So next, what do we have to hook up? 